before we get into the technicality of the solar energy systems, we must be very clear about the first step to follow in order to have a successful project. For us to fail in this first stage, we can lose a lot of money and not having a robust and durable solar energy system. Hello my friends, my name is Javier Camacho and for those of you that are the first time here ever visiting this channel, I just want to say welcome, welcome, and welcome. And for the rest of you that are already been here before, hi. Right. Today we're going to talk about the first steps that we need to take into consideration before we start building a solar energy system. Step one, it's the budget. And step two, it's we need to know how much capacity we want to build into the solar energy system. This by no means is the exact same order when it comes to the first steps, but they go hand to hand. If we don't know what type of budget we're going to have, we might not know what type of capacity we can build. In other words, a small budget means that it's going to be a small capacity. For the purpose of this project and the video series, I'm not going to talk about that much about budget because I already have all the materials that I need to just go from zero to full installation. But for the benefit of everybody out there, let's talk a little bit about budget. We need to understand that budget, it's the amount of money that we are willing to invest in our solar energy system and in the future of our home. Also the budget, it's going to be dictated by the capacity we want to build for a house. For example, it's not the same to build a 10 kilowatt hour solar energy system versus a one kilowatt hour system. Also the materials that you are going to use are going to be dependent on the budget, meaning that a monocrystalline uh, solar panel doesn't cost the same as a polycrystalline solar panel. Even though they produce power, they are made differently, they don't cost the same, and also they have a different performance. As we go on with the project, I will drop by some little tips and how much it costs for a particular item or material. When we talk about capacity, we actually mean one of the next examples. First, capacity is the amount of energy that one item from your house is going to consume during the hours it's going to be used for. Also, capacity is the amount of power that your solar panels is capable of producing during the day. And also, capacity is the amount of energy you can store on your battery. So, to summarize everything, capacity is just the energy that you are going to use you're going to produce or you're going to store at any given time or moment during the day. And this, it's the part that 99% of the people that either view my videos, comment on my videos, send me text messages, call me on the phone or send me an email. This is the part where every single person has a problem or don't understand. Because when you ask them how much capacity are you looking to have on your system, they say, well, I don't know. I just know that I want to turn on the TV. I want to turn on the fridge. I want to run the lights. I want to turn on my cats. I want to turn on my dogs. I want to have a trash can that can fly around the house. I want to turn on my car. I want to turn on my wallets, my cell phone, everything. I know I'm, I'm, I'm overreacting, but it's not far from reality. The biggest mistake we can make is not knowing what we need. You see, it's very easy to know what we want. I want to turn on the fridge for 24 hours a day, but that's a really big difference between what we want versus what we need. All cases are different, but the mathematics, it's the same. When we talk about capacity, we are going to refer as watts. Watts, it's the unit that is used to calculate energy, and that's about it. I'm not going to go into the specifics about watts. If you want to know more about it, I just recommend you that go to Google and do your homework, and that way you will know more. When we talk about watts for our project, we are going to refer to this different case scenario. Watts could be the amount of energy we're going to store in the batteries. For example, a 5,000 watts battery is just about the same of 5 kilowatts battery, which means when you talk about a kilowatt, it just means that you're talking about 1,000 watts. So when you see 5 kilowatts, it's just the same as saying 5 
times 1,000 equals 5,000 watts. Also, when we talk about watts, it's the amount of energy a product consumes. For example, this LED light that I have right here, it consumes around 10 watts per hour. The TV that I have on my bedroom consumes around 97 watt hours. Also, when you talk about watts, it could be the amount of energy you can produce per hour, meaning a solar panel, some of them can produce 100 watts per hour or 500 watts during the day. In order for us to calculate the watts a device consumes or produce, we must know the operational voltage and how much current or amps it's going to consume per hour. When you have that type of information, you can identify how much energy or watts a product consumes or produces when it's being used. For example, if you have a TV that has 115 volts, but it has a 0.65 amps of current, it means that it, it consumes around 74.75 watts per hour. In other words, if you going to use that TV for around five hours, it means that you're going to consume around 370 watts after those five hours of usage. Another example, it's a solar panel. When a solar panel says that it's 21 volts and it can produce around 4.75 amps per hour, it just means that after one hour, it produced around 99 watts. If you use that same panels during the day, let's say for five hours also, it means that at the end of the five hours, it produced around 495 watts. So to summarize everything, the watts of a product, it's calculated when you multiply voltage times amps. When you have that, you know how much it's going to consume or you know how much it's going to produce. So now that we have a better idea of how to calculate the watts and how we come up with them, I want to invite you for this part of the video to go to DIYBatteryStore.com and over there, you're gonna to go to the part that says tools. You're going to scroll down where it says watts calculator and for this video we're going to use the English version of it and as you can see over here we have a small web app that I created and developed to help you calculate how much watts you are going to use for a device. For the purpose of this video I'm going to choose the fridge and my fridge is going to be 110 volts. We're going to have a 3.75 amps and we want to run that for 24 hours. When you click add, that fridge is going to consume around 3,000 watts. And you're going, probably going to say, hey, that's a problem. When you multiply 110 times 3.75 times the 24 hours that you're going to use it, it's way more than 3,000 watts. And there's something I want to just share with you. The fridges that we, you and I use, they are pretty new fridge that they are efficient. Most of them only operates about one third of the time, meaning that one third of the time it's turned on, it's doing whatever it's going to do, and the other time it's just either standby or not consuming enough power. There's only one way to know for sure how much energy your fridge is going to consume, and it is by getting one of these. This is known as a kilowatt, and basically you just plug this to the wall, and then you plug in your fridge, and you run this for six or 12 hours, and that's going to give you the exact amount that you're going to need to run a fridge for the amount of hour that you need. When you go to the bottom part of the web app, you're going to see we have a link. Full disclosure, if you buy that from that link, I'm going to get paid a commission. So if you want to help out, just do it. So now that we know how much the fridge is going to consume when we use it, let's go and use the TV. So let's do 110. Let's say that TV consume about 85, 0.85 amps. And let's say we use total five hours per day on the TV. As you can see, now we have a different capacity that we're going to need for our solar energy system. And you can continue to play with this tool that I created for you guys. So that's it for today. You have a tool that you can use and feel free to let me know what you guys think about it. In the next video, we're going to use the data and we're going to start developing and designing the system. The panels that we're going to use, the inverter, how many batteries, everything, it's going to be based on the numbers that we get from this tool. And just a reminder, we are still trying to raise fundings to keep alive the DIY battery kit project with the BMS. And the BMS, it needs my attention. So there's a link under the description for a website called youhelp.com. Any amount of 
contribution that you can do, it will be really helpful. So please go there or just share the link and I'll be really happy, you know, if you do that. Just remember, like and share the video and never forget, Jesus Christ loves you, he died for you and you are very important for him. God bless you. Bye.